All right, hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Opus Magnum. It's, uh, it's a Zactronics game, which means I'm getting into something that I'm not prepared for. Let's see about this. Transmutation lab rules. Access is restricted to graduate level alchemical engineering students and faculty only. Any exceptions must be improved by the chancellor. Keep your student alchemist permit and sigil with you at all times in the lab. No food or drink is permitted in the lab. Do not sit or lean on transmutation engines or the related components. Please keep the area clean for everyone else. That means you, Anateus. Lesson introduction. I'm amazed you put off learning how to use the transmutation engine for this long. I was concentrating on working by hand. You know that. Um, Anateus, we're about to graduate. I know. That's why I need you to summarize all this for me as fast as you can. Solve the puzzle to continue. Okay, these are reagents. They're input materials for doing alchemy. This is a product. That's your job as an alchemist. Or your job as an alchemist is to build machines that combine reagents into useful projects. Or products. To complete a puzzle, build all products. Press the play button to start the transmutation engine. This is the instruction tray. Instructions tell the machine's parts what to do. Your machine has successfully created the desired product. Histograms and leaderboards are not available for tutorial puzzles. Understood so far? Of course, I knew this part was easy. That's why I never worried about it. I count you as a friend, Anateus, but something he... sometimes you carry your genius alchemist act a little too far. Act? Oops. Lesson arms. So let's take the first and most important part, the arm. I understand what ne what's next. Don't rush ahead. Let me go through the material. You need to see this. Okay, place an arm below, setting the rotation and length so that the gripper is over the reagent. Then add instructions to the instruction tray below to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. Okay, so how do I... So this is mechanisms. Now there's something, it says 20G. Do I have a limited resource set anywhere? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so I can have it three long, and it can only go here. Well, I guess I gotta pick this up. Okay, uh... So drop, grab, rotate... Oh. Grab... Rotate... So, can I just do D? So I want it to be 180. So I guess it would be R there. Play. Okay, so cycles, area, cost. Ah, cost and products. Okay, we've created the desired products. Return menu. Right, so arms pick up and move elemental proxies around the surface of the transmutation engine. Right. And you control their behavior with instructions, yes, of course. Of course. In some cases, you'll want an arm to rotate what's what it's gripping. You mean, as opposed to the arm itself rotating. That's right. In those cases, you'll pivot instructions. You'll use pivot instructions. Place an arm below, then add instructions to make it Pick up the reagent and move the product output. Okay. Oop. So pick up. Rotate. Pick up, rotate, probably this, and drop. Oh! Oh, 
I've gotta I've gotta have it bring the arm back. Yeah, if I if I don't bring the arm back, it doesn't reset. Okay. All very straightforward and simple. How nice that this is easy for you. Why? How long did it take you to learn all this? Let's just keep going. Poor friend. Pistons. A piston arm is a special kind of arm that can extend and retract. And presumably there are instructions that control the piston? That's right, I'll demonstrate. It's a piston arm below. Okay, so... We have grab. Oh, we have a reset instructions now. Okay. So there, there's the reset. There's the reset button now. That's helpful. Well. F. S. Wait. Double A. Huh. But there's no drop. What? Because I have a grab. I guess I'll just put this here. I mean... Oh, I see. The, the reset will drop it. I didn't realize that that was baked in. They didn't explain that particularly well. Oh well. I see. Piston arms can't, can reach areas you can't with a normal arm. That's what makes them so useful. They cost a little more than regular arms, though. And I can use the reset instructions to take an arm and return to its initial state from wherever it is. That's convenient. Just remember, the reset instruction takes the same amount of time it would to issue those individual instructions. Well, yes, of course it will. Of course. Okay, so tracks. What's next? Next we have tracks, which are like paths you can place on the board. It's easier to show you. Do I have conveyor belts? Sort of. Create a track between the reagent and the product. Then place an arm on the track and add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move it. Okay. So move instruction. Oh, I see. So I have arm and track. There we go. Oh. I see. You have to click on this. Okay. F. Double D. G. And C. Okay, so let's stop that. So I've got to move this here. Okay. Well, it's working out fairly well. See, so Wander's going to have a hard time with this one. I'm going to get quiet. I'll be honest with you. I see. When you place an arm on the track, the arm can move forward or backward along the path. Tracks can be quite powerful, but I'm still learning how to use them effectively in my designs. Could you put multiple arms onto a single track? I think so. I never thought to try that. I'll have to experiment later. Transmission. Uh, transmutation. To perform transmutations, we use glyphs. For example, say if I want to calcify an element, You'd place a glyph on the a glyph, glyph of calcification on the board and move that element you, you want to calcify over it. Anateus, I mean, yes, that's correct, but at least let me get through the explanation first. I got all the explanation I needed. 
Okay, use a piston arm and a glyph of calcification to turn the reagent, a fire atom, into the product, a salt atom. Move product output. Okay. So, reagent fire, product elemental salt, salt, water. Oh, so here's the glyph. Can I just, like, plunk it down right there? I don't have a... Oh, I do have a piston. In that case, let's move this here. Okay. I'm not going to remember these keyboard commands for a little while, but that's okay. I'll just keep forcing myself to learn it properly or something. Um... Like that. Yeah, there we go. That was easy enough. It's quite fast. I like this uh, this glyph. Yes, welcome to modern alchemical engineering. How many transmutations are available as glyphs? Most of the common ones so far. There's ongoing research to develop more, which you would know if you paid any attention to recent developments in your field. Almost done. Bonding! This must this must be a glyph of bonding. It is. To use it, actually, why don't you show me how it works? Seems that's the way things are going on here. Very well. I have to double check, uh, double click on those. Use two arms and the glyph of bonding to bond the two salt atoms together and move them to the product output. Okay, so we've got three and four. Now three rotates. Something like that. Oops. Okay, got to rotate it too. Move that there. Probably just this. There we go. That's easy enough. Glyphs on the glyph tab will be your best friend in this game. Uh-oh. What did I do wrong this time? Oh! The, uh, the other one has to be, uh, has to be loose, otherwise it's no good. The transmutation engine makes alchemical engineering far simpler. You could have been using this the whole time, but I'm glad I did things the hard way for so long. I hope you're not like this in real life, Anateus. Hmm? But this is real life. <laughs> I actually had friends in college. I went to art college, and, uh, uh, we were learning digital painting and a couple of other things, and... I had, a, I had a number of friends that specifically refused to learn how to digitally paint with a tablet, uh, saying that they wanted to learn it the hard way by using a mouse, and, you know, that, that would make them better or something. Dumbasses. <laughs> Shell was one of those people for a little bit, and then I was like, no, 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 here's a tablet, actually use it. And she's like, oh, yeah, this is actually better. Um, she had some, like, decent digital paintings with the mouse, but they weren't good comparatively. Uh, and so when I finally just, like, plunked a tablet in front of her, she just banged out this, like, crazy lizard man in, you know, a couple hours and looked rather nice for the time. Obviously, she's drastically improved since, but it always amuses me when people get, like, really stodgy about doing things the old way. Anyway, stabilized water. I think that's everything you need to know to use the transmutation engine effectively. I'll get one more product to make sure I get it. Or, make one more to make sure I get it. Blah. Okay. The building area, parts trays, and instructions tray can all be panned by right-clicking anywhere within them and dragging your mouse. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can use that instead. Cool. From now on, you will place products and reagents on your own. They're at the top of your toolbox. So what am I making? The desired output of this alchemical machine. Okay, so we have water and water. I 
I see, so I have limited amounts of each. Fixed arm length. What the? Oh. Whee! That's a Brabble. Glyph. Glyph of multi-bonding. Glyph of calcification. Okay. I think I probably just want something really boring like this. Probably. Okay, one and two. So F. Rotate, rotate, drop. Probably something like that. Oh. Huh. Oh! I see, I used I used the wrong part. This this is a glyph of unbonding. Not a glyph of bonding, I used the wrong one. I was wondering about that. I was like, wait a second, what's going on here? There we go. Okay, so now I gotta reset. Now is there any way that I can make this better? Probably not. I could just set it to that. I guess the other thing that I could have done... Let's see, always use reset, then drop, if that's what you're doing. Eh. I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, anyway, that's good enough for now. So what are your plans after you graduate? I think I'll be a head alchemist for one of the August houses. That's bold, right out of school? Why not? True enough, no ambition would be too great for you. And yourself? I like it here. I think I'll stick around and hopefully become a professor. You do seem to have an affinity for teaching. I think so. Well then, may each of us realize his opus magnum. Opus magnum. I've always found that to be a rather pretentious term, but I agree with the sentiment at least. Why are you laughing? Anateus Vaya found something pretentious. Tell me more. Okay, uh, let's see. So I did... Okay. Definitely the middle to bottom less cycles I'd love to see what like the the top uh, solutions are for this game but whatever okay so we're done with that and we're on to the next chapter dear Anateus congratulations on your appointment to the position of head alchemist to the house Van Tassen I'm very pleased to see you find a position in line with your talents and abilities as you prepare to leave the academic life I want to offer a word of advice. The politics of the city are much harsher and more dangerous than those of the academy. That's not true. You are singularly, you are a singularly gifted talent, and I hate to see you get caught up in those conflicts. The alchemist's place is not to sing to the level of those around us, but to rise above them in service of our art. Best of luck to you. Bella, Nadine Tolemo. Tolomeo. There we go. Yeah, my brother, my brother goes to MIT. Um, and... He absolutely despises academic politics. He wanted to stay a lab researcher when he was first going, like starting to go to M MIT. Um, and uh, and five years later, like I think he graduates sometime within the next year. Uh, I I think uh, now he wants to go be a programmer at some company where he doesn't have to worry about grants or, or backstabbing and stuff like that. 
I guess my dad had to deal with that on the private sector, too. It just doesn't sound like research is any fun. Anyway, Van Tassen's new alchemist. So how did it go? A nightmare. Armand kept going through his old stories about honor and righteousness. The Lady Van Tassen looks like she's embalmed. F Frederick spilled flu food down the front of his shirt. What a brave man you are, surviving a formal dinner. It really is difficult, though. I can't stand stuffiness. Our man didn't remember my name. Captain Gelt had to prompt him several times. To be fair, you only started rather recently. Yes, I suppose it's too much to ask. Such a complicated, burdensome thing to remember only a single name. The name of your new alchemist. The one who graduated at the top of his class from the College of Alchemical Engineering. Nateus. You see, you remember my name just fine. I think our man would know my name? Keeping in mind I've been here my whole life. Maybe next time you can go my- Oh, maybe next time you can go my place. You might not even realize it's a different person. Uh, Alchemist Provisioner. Which were you again? Hmm, yes. Hmm. You'll get us in trouble. I've been doing this for years. Okay. Well, this is an odd first project. I feel like someone's having a laugh at my expense. Why? Were you asked to create the... Philosopher's Stone? Close. Actually, one more guess. Transform lead into gold? Yes, apparently there's an old Van Tassen lead mine. Wouldn't it be better if it just produced gold instead? Our man suggested it, so casually. Sounds wonderful. Time to put your university degree to the test. The Glyph of Protection consumes an atom of Quicksilver and promotes an atom of metal to its next higher form. By doing this repeatedly, even lead, the base... Basest metal can be transmuted into the finest gold. Okay, so products. Gold. Let's see. Elemental Quicksilver. Glyph of Projection. need to change my positioning in this chair. I keep getting... So this is one of those, like, uh, really casual-ish games. And so I'm just going to slowly get uh, sinkier and sinkier into my chair as we go along. Okay. So how many times do I have to promote? I would love to see what the uh, scale is here. Uh, here we are. Exactly what I need to know. So lead all the way up to gold... We need five bits of qu Quicksilver for this. Okay. Is this the really... Simple version. I think so. Okay. F A F A F A F A F Five. F A or no, probably D from this angle. And then we wait here. And then, like, rotate. And then reset to both, maybe? Wait, hold on. Replay. Nope. Huh. Maybe this is not the best way to do it. Maybe having... This one? Oh, I had to drop it. So 
So I have to I have to drop it from the the wheel of death. Is this even necessary? F A If I have two, this isn't this isn't worth it. Having two of these at the same time. The main problem is just um well, okay. So If I just do reset and delete these, how do I... Oh, this is the wrong one. Can I undo? Perfect. Okay. So that just holds that there. I Can I just hold it there? The three-armed one only hits the three directions that it initially points. Okay, yeah, so that's that's not useful for what I'm doing here. Okay. Undo that one. What's this? Repeat instructions. One, two, three, four, and five. Might have to move this here, then. Maybe there? Trying to think if there's a better way to do this. There is. I I might have to turn off. I might have to turn on hermit mode. Just because I'm gonna look at these. And I'm going to be like, how? How did you do? Because I can see how you you can do it with limited area and cost. But that would crank up your cycles a lot. Yeah, you can't get all three histograms at the lowest at once. I mean, ultimately, I don't care that much. 